Hello, welcome back. Um, today I am f doing a video about the earlier work of John Byrne, no doubt one of my favorite Bronze Age artists. In front of me here is Chronicle 3, a fanzine magazine. Uh, John Byrne did a few uh, short stories that was published in various fanzines in late 1972 and early 1973. This is early 1973, so this is not his earliest work, but it is about as early as I can find it. Look at this cover. Beautiful penciling, as you can see. Very, uh, very reminiscent of um, New Adam as far as style. Just look at how his signature is. So in the old days, John Byrne signed his work very different from what it is today. But I love this picture. It's almost like a photograph. It's so well done. Anyhow, so this is a fanzine. It has all kind of different um, drawings that people submit. Fanzine was, you know, basically ways fan uh, around the country used to connect. You know, back in the early days where the internet did not exist yet, and you know, people want to uh, write and talk about their uh, favorite comic books as well as you know, submitting their work and show their uh, drawing to other fans. So it's neat, you know, it's not like people make a lot of money publishing fanzine. It definitely was more, uh, mostly labor of love for many publishers as far as fanzine is concerned. Um, that's why most of them went out of business eventually. You know, it's always neat to find, you know, some famous artist's work show up in the fanzine first before they made it to comic books. Uh, anyhow, so this is the start of John Byrne's work. So here is his short story. To give you a, a good scan of the work. Very nice, that's a very good looking angle. Certainly, you know, from looking at this page, you would have no idea if this is John Byrne. But as we go through this fanzine, I think you will start to see a lot of his style showing through. Certainly, when I first look at this artwork, no doubt it tells me that whoever it was that drew this had a lot of potential. You know, it's definitely a lot better than the rest of the arts in this magazine. Look at that. That's a great looking angle. Look at the hand placement. The drawing hands and fingers are not easy, so that's one of the few things few things I tend to focus early on on any artist to me it's very easy to draw the face the nose the lips all that stuff but when it come down to eyes and hands those are not so easy so as you can see it's very well drawn but nothing spectacular but this is a very nice page with very beautiful small details. John Byrne, as you can see from the very beginning, was very good at drawing objects like spaceships, metal objects. Look at that, that's a beautiful spaceship. He also ink you know, this issue, so um, you know, like most young artists, you know, you're not gonna be able to find anybody else that will ink your work for free. 
but I, for me, uh, this page right here start to show me the John Byrne. You, know, I, you can start to to see some of, some of his style show up with the spaceship. Um, for sure, take a look at this uh, the soldier with the the suit. This is very John Byrne the way. John draw very smooth lines as far as legs and knees. So this right here, definitely you can tell. And then look, look at the shape of uh, the armor. You know, John. This is almost like his signature way when he draws something shiny. You know, the little circle thing. That's very common. I think I've seen this a million times in many of his books. So. That's one of his uh, telltale's uh, style of drawing. This is a beautiful shot right here. You know, one thing John is also very distinguished as far as his style is how he draw, how he drew uh, stomachs and abs and rib cage. That right there is very, uh, you know, very uh, easily recognized with his style. But as you can see, you know, that's the beautiful spaceship right there. You know, for sure, you know, it surprised me that when I see this book and see how well he drew, I think the first thing that I thought of was why does it take him so long from 1973 to 1976 to break into uh, BC or Marvel? You know, I don't really know the full story, but uh, you know, no doubt from looking at this page here, you can tell. See how beautiful it's, it's drawn. You know, it's it's very well done. The layout of the page was very, you know, was good, professional. Certainly, you know, I I uh, can see why. Uh, you cannot get a job with uh, VC or Marvel. This is probably the best looking panel right here. Look at this. That's a beautiful hand. A beautiful shot right there. See the rib cage. That's very John Byrne-ish right there. Uh, so you can see. That's, you know, as I mentioned already, you know, it's very uh, easy to distinguish John Byrne's style with the way he draw hands and rib cage and stomach and legs. No doubt, I, you can see that you know he's more influenced by somebody like Neil Adams because you know he tend to to draw people with uh, more realistic muscle tone. Not too bulky, not too round. And as I mentioned before, let's take a look at this. This is a beautiful, sharp drawing and inking job. John is great at drawing robots. And we are near the end of um, the short story. And as you can see, Interpretation John Byrne. Uh, one of the good things about this fanzine is on the last page, uh, you know, they also included uh, a bunch of pinups, headshots that uh, he drew. Uh, I'm not sure who that is, but you get the Green Lantern here. That's pretty nice. You get Nick Fury there. And this is a beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Of Robin. That's the Soul John, the way he draws the lips. Flash. I love this right here. John is great at drawing lips and eyes. I love it. That's a beautiful picture of Robin right there. One of the few times that you can say Robin look like a badass. <laughs> and here's a beautiful drawing of Dead Man about as good as Neil Adams can do it, right? Beautiful. 
So there you go. That's the fan's eye. Okay, now let's take a look at his earlier comic, published comic work. And um, somehow uh, he landed his first, uh, I guess, paying jobs or comic mainstream related jobs with uh, Charlton. And he did a backup story for this issue of E Man. Here's my beautiful copy, as you can see. The one thing about Charlton is this company tend to use lesser stock of paper on both covers and um, the interior. So as beautiful as this book is, as you can see, it's not that glossy or shiny. And uh, and that's for all the issues. You know, it's not like uh, you can go out there and find an issue of E-Man like this that have a better gloss. They all kind of dull like this. So the first part of this book have uh, Joe Staten doing E-Man, which is decent. I like Joe. And then let's go to uh, John Byrne work. Here we go. Uh, I believe John also did the inking here. So here we go. His early work as Ch at Charlton. Look at that. You can tell the inking is fairly um, light. It's sharp. You know, it's clean, but it's also very light. Beautiful drawing. As I mentioned before, you know, John can draw robot from day one, so that's a beautiful rendition of ROG 2000. So, as you can see, you know, very early on, John Byrne was pretty good, certainly not as refined as he became, I guess, in the late 70s. Once he, you know, got his experience with the X-Men, but at this stage, look at that. All of these are beautiful drawing, you know, the, the inking certainly is not up to par in my opinion, but the drawing is uh, more than made up for it. As you can see. Look at that. So that's an example of, you know, not so great inking as, as well as here. It's very, like I said, it's clean, but it's light. This is a very short story, but once again, you know, if, if I was uh, working in the front office of either Marvel and DC, you know, if I came across this book, you know, it would be hard for me not to pick up the phone and, and find out who the heck this guy is and give him a job. Look at that. That is a great shot right here. As I mentioned before, drawing hands is not easy. And that's beautiful right there. John had very good story laid out from the very get-go. So, you know, it, it's... Uh, get all the skills, all the right skills to be a great comic book artist from the start. Look at these pictures. Not a great looking drawing of a beautiful person, but even that, the eyes are beautiful. You know, John drew beautiful eyes and he probably even drew himself into these comic books because I think that's a portrait of himself right there, John. So, this is how he got his first uh, published work with Charlton, this very first issue. Look at that. That's a beautiful drawing, again, of the robot. But there you go. If you have not got this, this issue, I guess if you were talking about key, uh, John Byrne work this might be top of the list just because I think it's his very first uh, published work anyhow let's move on to the next one here is my beautiful copy of Doomsday plus one once again 
um, it's a sharp beautiful copy probably 96 ish not very little is wrong with this book razor sharp beautiful book I love this book you know when I when I found this book I was so happy because it's one of those few book that is not expensive but it's not easy to find especially in high grades so here's a beautiful cover and this is um, the first title that John was able to do a full issue you know I mean up until then you know like E-Man was just a backup story uh, so here is the first time that he actually had to draw and ink the entire book and here we go certainly not my favorite John Byrne splash page uh, out of all, out of many splash page that he did I would say that this is probably one of the worst one in that uh, this is not a splash page material it's a beautiful kissing scene here but need something much more dramatic but as you can see this book came out uh, summer of 1975 the one thing about this book as I go through it you will see that it, it could be just my opinion that this is the first time that John did the entire you know book maybe he was under the pressure of finishing it on time so the inking and penciling was definitely not up to par in my opinion I felt that his effort here was less than his effort in the short story on E-Man it's still good but as you go through this you will notice that the inking was very weak as well as the penciling you can see it's almost sloppy look at that you know, I maybe he intended for the books to look this way because it's doomsday plus one with a lot of black in it but still I find that the inking was very weak perhaps inconsistent would be a better word to describe when John Byrne draws small pictures the detail is very good as quickly as I can as you can see that's that's a beautiful panel right there of the explosion perhaps some of my favorite pages are right here this is a beautiful full page look at the beautiful face the eyes the lips that's what I'm talking about that's John Byrne at his finest right there look at that beautiful can you imagine these drawing if he had the right inker that can complement him look at that that's the beautiful drawing of the eyes right there I love it but as you can see the inking was the inking was very weak uh, and uh, but this book was okay like I said it was not bad but it certainly surprised me that I didn't see a vast improvement from the E-Man work compared to this book especially when this is his debut you know this is the key this is the first time he has his own book I would have thought that there would be something a little bit more but still look at that that's gorgeous right there so as you can see you know, uh, John Byrne was pretty good. You know, even when it was not great, at this book uh, content is, you can see a lot of potential. You know, if anybody, any executive that was going through and look at this book, they, they, I can't imagine why they would not want to hire John Byrne to work on their books. Here's an example of what I say is weak inking. Look at this. It's almost like a sketch. It, 
it could be a great large page but the poor uh, inking job you know give it a feel like it's almost uh, not finished so that's my uh, you know my, my biggest complaint about these early work with Charlton is you see a lot of potential a lot of raw talent just look, look at this it's a well-drawn picture but it's almost as if he drew the picture using the ink pen and just sketch it perhaps one of the weak panel right there look at that if I just show you that picture right there alone you probably couldn't guess it was John Byrne but he more than made up for it on the next page. Look at this beautiful action shot. Look at that. See? Signature John Byrne ribcage and abs. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So this is the book. Doomsday number one. And then, you know, if you have a chance to pick up the Doomsday Plus One series, it's like I said before, it's not expensive, especially if you just want to find readers. And here's my reader's copy of uh, issue number eight. I just bring this out to show you that, you know, his work pretty much was the same from issue number one through issue number eight. There wasn't any kind of drastic improvement, uh, you know, mainly because I think you know he's not um, into inking. You know, he's not. Uh, he didn't do a good job inking, and perhaps the time constraint to draw, you know, eighteen to twenty page, uh, you know, make it almost impossible for him to be able to draw and ink well at the same time. But perhaps one of the early sign that he changed his signature it's right there that's almost like the way he signed everything now this book is fun you know like i said this series is a lot of fun uh you can see you know a lot of potential it's, it's fun for me to go back and take a look at the earlier work of any artist especially the one that i love just so that i can see the progression the artists, hopefully, good artists progress over time and um, improve and hone their skills. You know, this is beautiful drawing right here. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful robots. Very well drawn. You know, anyhow, you know, I think um, it is it's pleasing to me to be able to have uh, these early issues to look through because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm a big fan of John Byrne and I can't say enough about how much I love his style, you know, like Neil Adams, you know. Before I before I flip through a different book, I want to bring out this panel. Look at this. This is John Byrne all the way. This the hand. This is so his style. Beautiful shot. And so there you go. So that's Doomsday. You know, if you look at this next few panel, it once again I bring up the issue of you know inconsistent inking. Look at that. It's almost sloppy, but it's certainly um, not very well drawn or ink. It's it may be well drawn, but certainly you know, the inking make it sloppy. Okay, so that's Doomsday 